Well, then let's get happy and start looking <laughs> towards the future and new and emerging things that are happening. I mean, I think, Elena, you have had quite a splash uh, with combination data with nivolumab and ipilimumab for patients with gastric cancer. Right. So Checkmate 32 was started as a basket study where there were picked the winners for different uh, solid tumors and gastric cancer uh, showed a lot of activity. We, this paper will be published in JCU this month. Uh, we looked at higher doses, lower doses of ipilimumab uh, in combination with nivolumab. And in gastric, similar to melanoma and small cell lung cancer, Nevo 1, IP3 is the preferred regimen. When you said splash, I thought you meant toxicity. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. Yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, so the grade three, four toxicity rate is quite high with that regimen, and IPI uh, really drives this toxicity profile. Patients generally develop liver function test abnormalities, diarrhea, uh, toxicities that are reversible with high dose steroids, but you really have to know what you're observing and not minimize the side effects. So that being said, for in patients that are fit, uh, combination therapies, and that's sort of the lesson we've learned, right? In gastric cancer, two drugs is usually better than one, particularly for immune checkpoint inhibitors. Although the attraction data uh, and the keynote data shows that gastric cancer is a lukewarm tumor. It's not a cold tumor, but it's not a hot tumor. We, got, we have to make it more immunogenic with addition anti-CTLA-4. So the hypothesis was that if you start earlier on, while the patients are fitter, perhaps you can get them through. Um, more of the combination therapy. And so that's the, uh, the, the genesis behind Checkmate 649 study that's actually looking in the combination therapies in first line uh, metastatic gastric cancer and comparing it to ch chemotherapy. And so you're also doing other combinations as well, bringing the anti-angiogenesis drugs in combination with a checkpoint inhibitor. Why do we think that would work? So the idea is that in gastric cancer, there's not a single pathognomonic driver. Because the epithelium has been exposed to so many insults over the patient's years and DNA damage, there's, it's not this one driver, one drug approach. So to do uh, combination therapies with immune checkpoint inhibitors, but also VEGFR2 inhibitors, makes the tumor more immunogenic, brings in uh, theoretically uh, more uh, T cells and, and makes the immunotherapy work better. It's all in hypothesis uh, state. Uh, some of the studies, although looked promising to begin with, uh, you know, don't look as good as we had hoped. But I think there is something there for the idea that we just need to try harder. So we're seeing both Pembro plus RAM as well as Nevo plus RAM. We've seen some readout of the Pembro plus RAM data, but we'll see what the Nevo plus RAM shows to see if we see any differences there. And then you know, if immunotherapy helps for patients with advanced disease, why don't we bring it into the adjuvant setting? We've seen this tactic across multiple different tumor types where immunotherapy works with success. So Eric, tell us a little bit about Keynote 585 uh, for, the, for the treatment of locally yeah. advanced. Key, Keynote 585 is a study where we start with the concept that uh, perioperative chemotherapy is of benefit for patients. Uh, we have seen the FLOT uh, data being presented last year uh, with FLOT versus the doublet uh, chemotherapy versus Volfox showing an improved outcome. So in that concept, it's two months of FLOT operation, two months of uh, FLOT um, uh, regimen. And the concept now is to, to try to improve on that. Um, uh, there was this, the UK study with uh, with perioperative chemotherapy plus or minus bevacizumab, which failed, it did not show any benefit. And now, of course, with the emerging data of uh, checkpoint inhibitors in metastatic disease, it's logic to look at this strategy also of a combination of chemo plus a checkpoint inhibitor uh, to try to improve the survival and to reduce recurrences. Um, and that's the basis of, uh, of Keynote 585, uh, where patients with locally advanced disease are then randomized between two months of uh, FLOT or the investigators can still choose for a doublet, um, uh, followed by surgery, followed by two months of uh, postoperative chemotherapy FLOT um, with or without pembrolizumab um, in, in this study. And with the hope to, to improve the outcome, there is a, f a big focus also on translation research 
try to understand which subgroups of patients uh, may benefit more or will benefit more uh, in this situation, and that's an important aspect. Right? Absolutely, and of course, nivolumab can't be left out. So, Peter, we have Checkmate 577. Sure. Now the numbers are getting too close to each other. It's getting it's time. getting very complicated <laughs> to remember all of these. But uh, Checkmate uh, 577 is the counterpart to this study in esophageal cancer. And really, the global standard right now is the cross-regimen for uh, preoperative treatment of esophageal cancer. So what this study does is it basically says, okay, you get cross front line, you get your usual surgery, and as long as you've had an R0 resection um, and you have uh, some residual disease, uh, you can enroll in this particular study. Um, and basically the idea is simply to give a post-operative nivolumab, uh, initially every two weeks, and then uh, after a set period it goes to once every four weeks for a total of one year. And again, the idea is to see if we can move the bar on, uh, on survival in these patients. Uh, it's a very simple idea. And, uh, uh, it's moving along. I will see how how it goes. Awesome. And, and sort of other other new agents. So we have um, emerging data coming from a study that you have done, Kohei. You can't tell us very much about it, but it's using TAS102 for patients oh. with gastric cancer. Yes, TAS102 is a already approved drug uh, for colorectal cancer. We, we previously investigated this TAS102 for heavily pretreated gastric cancer patients in Japanese phase two trial, and it showed approximately 50% disease control rate and the median over survival exceed eight months, even in southern line or later lines of treatment. So that's why a uh, global study of this TAS102 was conducted to compare uh, perceived plus best supportive care for heavily pretreated gastric cancer patients. So uh, already analysis was finished and the top line results say it, it, it was positive. Uh, already a pharmaceutical company was released the result. I'm very happy for it. But detail of these data will be presented in upcoming scientific meeting, SMOGA. Yes, we're very excited. I, I tell you, there's more and more data that is coming out now, big data at ESMO GI, so please stay tuned um, to, to see what that, that positive data was.